Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed weather forecast. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the southeast as a lot of rainfall will lead to some significant flood concerns. And then we got to look at the northeast as another nor'easter brings heavy snowfall for a lot of locations. But before we get talking about our storm system for the northeast, it's a good idea that we look at our current air temperature because it is quite warm for some locations. Southern Texas, Central Texas in the upper 70s to upper 80s. Look at Florida in the upper 80s, mid 80s. And then you go into the Midwest like the Ozarks, you're already in the mid to upper 60s. But not everyone is feeling this warmth. It's very cold if you are in the northern tier of the United States where you're seeing temperatures already still in the upper teens to lower 20s. Versus if you're in Colorado, you're still seeing temperatures in the 30s and upper 20s. It's going to be these two air masses that run into each other and it's going to set off a big monster nor'easter for the northeast in the next couple of days. You could absolutely see where the warmest air actually is on satellite imagery. Isn't that cool? You don't see that very often. We got a stationary boundary here. We got a cold front back here. Warm air is advecting northward, so areas like Florida are definitely feeling the warmth versus if you go to the north, it is not as warm, but it is mild in the 60s. So what does this all look like on the NAM 3 kilometer model, which is our convective allowing model? Well, all the yellows and oranges indicate moderate to heavy rainfall, severe thunderstorms. We can get a couple of tornadoes today, some large hail as well with this. But the most important thing is there's going to be a lot of flooding because we're going to see rain just park itself over an area for a long period of time. Lots of storm training, storms moving over the same area. So if you're in Alabama, if you're in Georgia, this is going to be a big issue. I mean, in the Atlanta metro area, could be talking about some pretty heavy rainfall for your evening commute for your Friday into your Saturday. So just take that into consideration. Doing anything outdoors today into uh, late tonight, probably not a good idea because there's going to be a lot of flooded roads, unfortunately, in this area. And this is going to continue with periods of moderate to heavy rainfall with some of the convective nature storms through Saturday morning. This is why the Storm Prediction Center has maintained a slight risk for severe weather for portions of Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi through this afternoon, driven by a 5% chance of tornadoes and a 15% risk for large hail, as well as a 15% risk for damaging winds of 65 miles an hour. By Saturday early afternoon, that weather system moves into the eastern seaboard, such as North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, into Pennsylvania, as well as Maryland and Delaware, where you're looking at some increasing moderate to heavy rainfall into your Saturday morning, into the early afternoon, and this is going to lead to flood concerns. Not as bad as Alabama or Georgia, but still, you're going to be dealing with some ponding on roadways, maybe some street flooding, urban flooding, maybe some small creek and stream flooding as well. Just keep that in mind. This is a very juicy system with a lot of moisture to work with. And so this system is eventually going to be moving into the northeast where it's going to bring another set of problems. And that issue is going to be moderate to heavy snowfall and blizzard-like conditions for the higher elevations, mainly because there's going to be a lot of orographic effects. So looking at the NAM here, for late Saturday afternoon into the evening hours, we can see some of the snow falling across central New York State. Nothing for downtown New York with this system. I think confidence is pretty good that much of the New York area will not be getting any snow whatsoever. Maybe on the very back side, you might get a little flurry or two, but nothing too significant. It's all going to be falling over central northern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, as well as Connecticut and Massachusetts. Oh, actually not really Connecticut, sorry about that, but Massachusetts, right on the border there of Connecticut. And then look at this, very heavy snowfall by Sunday morning. Some of these snow showers could contain some thunder snow. So it doesn't surprise me if you get locally heavy snowfall rates, possibly exceeding maybe 
about a uh, two to three inches per hour at times as that system really swings on through. Very deep surface low as well. And then by the very end of the model run, you can see some wraparound moisture coming off the Great Lakes here, like Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. And that's going to bring maybe, maybe just a couple of flurries of snow. Now it's time to look at how much snowfall could you see out of this nor'easter. Well, it depends on where you're actually situated. Along the uh, southern shore of Lake Erie here, you're likely to see anywhere between maybe three to five inches of snowfall. Some localized amounts possibly exceeding six inches. But look at the majority of the heaviest snow will be in central, northern, northeastern New York, where you might get about a foot to a foot and a half of snow. Some of the highest peaks here could get even two feet of snowfall. Once this is all said and done, including for Vermont, you could see anywhere between about one to maybe two feet of snowfall. But again, the two feet will be found in the higher elevations. The valleys probably only going to get about six to 15 inches of snowfall, whereas the peaks, again, can see over two feet. Look at Maine. Anywhere between six to 12 inches of snow is expected, unless you're in western Maine, where you might get a lot more, perhaps maybe 12 to 18 inches of snow. Now that we talked about the snow, let's talk about how much rainfall additional to come for Alabama, for Georgia, for the Carolinas. Unfortunately, I've got to say there could be an additional four to six inches of rainfall in the next day or so. And that is why the Weather Prediction Center has issued that a moderate risk for heavy rainfall, surrounded by that with a slight risk for heavy rainfall and flooding. And when we take a look at our day two excessive rainfall outlook, there is also quite a bit of rainfall that is expected for portions of North and South Carolina. And that is why the Weather Prediction Center has maintained a slight risk for heavy rainfall and flooding for that area. Another big issue with this storm system will be the strong winds that will bring down trees and power lines and lead to some property damage. You're getting into a big storm system again. And so we can see here by this afternoon and evening hours, wind gusts between 30 to 40 miles an hour across portions of Pennsylvania into western New York, as well as the Ohio Valley. So keep that in mind. Some high winds are anticipated. But really, it's not until we get into tomorrow morning where we start seeing wind gusts between 45 to 55 miles an hour, enough to, again, bring down trees and power lines and result in some power outages, and then eventually possibly 60 mile an hour wind gusts in portions here of, say, Buffalo, New York, and to the west. Uh, it could be really, really bad. And then the bigger part of this storm system will then target the extreme northeast, like Cape Cod, where you're likely to see wind gusts between 55 to even 80 miles an hour. Look at this, 70, and then you go right off shore here, you're looking at 80 mile an hour wind gusts. This is significant by all standards, and then eventually moving into Maine, where you might see wind gusts right along the coast exceeding 70 to even 90 miles an hour. That would be absolutely devastating to see. And the winds remain pretty strong on the backside of this storm as well, with wind gusts between 35 to 45 miles an hour. Now, before I do end the video, I do have five important announcements to share with you all. As always, I've been mentioning this in my past few videos. I am going to be hosting a total solar eclipse live stream on Monday, April the 8th, 2024. It begins in my location at Kerrville, Texas at 12.15 p.m. We're going to be making the drive to Kerrville, Texas on April the 3rd. It's going to be a very exciting event. And not only that, I will be doing a Q&A live stream on April the 2nd about what my plans are for this solar eclipse. So I highly recommend you all joining that stream so that way your questions can be answered if you have any. And then, of course, my first Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Outlook will be released on April the 15th. So on Monday, April the 15th is when it will come out. And then my first routine tropical weather outlook will begin on May 25th, and it will run through November the 1st. But as always, you could also follow me here on Discord at Weather Force today. There will be a link in the description below this video, along to go with my Twitter um, 
page as well. Well, anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed weather forecast, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. As always, have a great rest of your Friday. I'll be back in the home weather office again tomorrow with another detailed weather forecast.